Welcome to Kigali Dialogue. This is our live uh, session. My name is Sarah Muswez. I'm from uh, South Africa. This live session has a specific title and a title that is very important in, uh, in South Africa, in India, and the world over. Uh, thanks for joining us. The title is Lifestyle for Environment, the Consumption Conundrum. And it is a big conundrum that we are trying to resolve today through a conversation with uh, Professor Katun and as well as uh, Ambassador Chinoy. So welcome, let's uh, start the conversation. And maybe let me start with Ambassador uh, Chinoy. Just give us a bit of context of why uh, what we call life, the life campaign, the life program uh, is important and where, when did it start? Uh, thank you very much. So let me begin by explaining a bit of the context of uh, LIFE, which stands for Lifestyle for Environment. And I think we have hit the nail on the head by trying to discuss the consumption conundrum. And let me take you straight away to what uh, John Maynard uh, Keynes, uh, the great economist, had said. Uh, his view was that uh, uh, if there is economic growth, continuous economic growth, it would end up satisfying the material needs of all of humanity. Mahatma Gandhi, on the other hand, had a slightly different view. His view was that the earth has enough to meet the needs of all, but not to meet the greed of all. And we are today at a point uh, in human development where we have seen that uh, this uh, one earth of ours, by the way, the motto of the G20 is also one earth, one family, one future, that this one earth of ours is being rampantly abused uh, systematically uh, through what we call unbridled consumption. And that is why the Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi, came up uh, with this uh, wonderful idea, which is really a people-centric idea of uh, lifestyle for environment, wherein uh, the key point is that uh, uh, we should try and create pro-planet people uh, at the individual level to encourage each one of us to engage in what we call responsible consumption and production. After all, uh, the earth has limited resources. The air that we breathe, the water that we drink, uh, the minerals and metals and rare earths that we dig out from the earth, they're all limited in nature. And that is why if we create pro-planet people, we will be able to address some of the key sustainable developmental uh, goals uh, of the UN as well. For instance, SDG uh, 12, uh, which is uh, in fact uh, in regard to uh, responsible uh, you know, uh, consumption. Uh, we also have SDG 13, with, which is uh, relevant to climate action. SDG 15, which is relevant to uh, life on Earth. And by life on Earth, uh, the Prime Minister of India also means uh, the oneness of all life on Earth, uh, sentient and non-sentient beings. Uh, the point here is that uh, there is an intrinsic relationship between everything in nature. And it is in the great tradition of India's civilizational values of uh, non-violence uh, that we approach nature, Mother Earth, as well. That we must respect Mother Earth and all that it contains, and that we must respect the uh, basic inherent linkage uh, between uh, humankind, uh, animals, mm -hmm. as well as uh, plants uh, and all other resources on Earth. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, what we call lifestyle for environment. Mm -hmm. uh, if I may just add very quickly, yeah. uh, the whole point here is to engage in responsible consumption and production. And by that, we really mean going about uh, creating an economy uh, that uh, gives uh, priority to the uh, four R's of uh, uh, what you call uh, reduce, uh, recycle, uh, and uh, what you call uh, um, repair, um, and uh, remove, and, and such other stuff. Basically to create a, a circular carbon economy in which there is no unbridled consumption. I mean, you look at the amount of food that is wasted on Earth today. Uh, about 3.5 billion tons of uh, food that we produce on Earth every year. One third is clearly wasted. 
If you look at uh, how much water it takes to produce one shirt, there are various accounts ranging from 400 gallons of water to 2,700 liters. And it really means that every time you uh, go about unnecessarily consuming something, you're actually destroying the Earth's resources. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks for that. I think the, the context is important for all individuals on, on Earth, and maybe we are we are trying to resolve a, a, a bigger crisis. But let's maybe let's try to map what the 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 crisis itself, and maybe uh, 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 Professor Katun, you could you could just map out for us what the the nature of the crisis. How big is the problem? Is is there even a crisis? Uh, the crisis of climate change is real and present. There's no doubt uh, this crisis has been created because of the way we live, our, we, the way we maintain our lifestyles in terms of consumption and production. And as has been said, the resources are limited, but human want is unlimited. And resources are also two types, exhaustible and renewables. So exhaustible resources, once it is exhausted, we can never get back. Renewables, we can, with the use of technology and with uh, the minimum use or the uh, rational use of this. But then, you know, we are relying definitely in terms of, you know, uh, increasing our consumption or increasing our improving the lifestyle. We are talking about technological innovation, that technology can take care of many things. Now, it can also reduce the emission level, carbon emission, greenhouse gas emissions, and also it can produce more. But there is a limit to innovation and efficiency. So there comes the issue of lifestyle. It has to be an inherent part, and it has to be also in conjunction with technological innovation and the life, the way we live our lives. So that's why um, the, there is a fundamental need for changing in the concepts how we have developed so far and why we are running after so much of consumption. The, in economics, we say that when a country progresses, uh, it's good because you know per capita um, GDP is increasing, gross domestic product, economic growth is really good because then you can have trickle down effect on people. But that theory is totally invalid now, uh, and the the whole concept and the whole practice of GDP accounting or measuring economic progress or development through the lens of economic growth is uh, false. We have to move away from this measurement. These are not sustainable, so we have to actually look for sustainable development itself. By sustainable development, we not only mean that it is in environmentally sustainable, but it is also socially sustainable, economically sustainable. Because you see, when we had a uh, you know, health crisis like COVID, we have seen that the inequality has multiplied. Yeah. And those who were leaving behind, they even fall, uh, fell further behind. Yeah. So that means because it, we were already living in an unequal society. So unequal society can only lead to further you know, inequality when there is crisis, be it environmental crisis, be it any social crisis. So that's why you have to look at development in a holistic way. And that holistic way would be a nexus of economic, social, and environmental development. Yeah. Thanks, uh, uh, and as, as, as you were talking, I, I, I could not resist but think that uh, maybe I should ask you this question directly, um, that the, 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 the program, the, the, the campaign, the initiative around life itself is a critique against orthodox uh, economics, right? And therefore, what we are trying to grapple with here is, is a system in crisis, uh, both, and I want I want to start with production itself, and and then and then and then and then consumption. So I just want to to hear your 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 thoughts on that. You see, why I have said that this GDP um, estimation and measuring human welfare through GDP is flawed because you see GDP is a measure when you have economic transaction in the market, so you produce a you know 
product and you sell it, you earn money, and there are transactions of you know, money. So that adds to the accounting, so GDP accounting. So if I you know, cut forest and make industry there, mm -hmm. I will definitely uh, create employment and income for people, but at the cost of what? Yep. So we are deforesting, yeah. so, uh, which means that carbon emission and all. Similarly, if I just you know, fill up the uh, water bodies mm -hmm. uh, and build their you know, residential areas, industries, and f factories, they will add to the economy. But the intrinsic values we are losing yeah. is not replaceable. Yeah. So that's why a sustainable, instead of GDP now, we are talking about a sustainable GDP. Mm -hmm what is you know, net GDP itself. Mm -hmm. And again, coming back to the economic concept as mm -hmm. such, that you know, development in a holistic way, yeah. not in a narrow, uh, f narrow lens, which will only look for income. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. Ambassador, Ambassador Chinoy, um, we clearly have a, a, a problem of over uh, a, a con con consumption. Maybe if you can just, um, for uh, for the purposes of, of of all of us, just you you were you were mentioning figures earlier on. Where is this over consumption happening uh, 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 really, and where where should we be targeting most of our efforts? Indeed, it's a global crisis, but where is it really uh, 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 taking place? So the fact of the matter is that. Uh there is great inequality around the world in terms of uh, economic development, economic growth, as well as resources. And therefore, consumption and production are also very unevenly divided. Um, so therefore, uh, one of the most uh, important ways of starting is to uh, urge those that consume more, those that waste more, uh, those that produce more, to observe a certain uh, a sort of uh, responsible attitude uh, towards the Earth's resources. That, I'm afraid, will have to come uh, more from the developed countries because in the developing countries, we've also seen that traditionally there is already a very responsible attitude towards resources, practically because they are scarce. Therefore, uh, economies uh, in the global south, in any case, do a lot of uh, reusing, recycling, repairing, etc. Um, and that circular economy, the virtuous cycle, is already present in many parts of the global south. But may I just add here that the Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi, came up with this uh, proposal uh, called Lifestyle for Environment Mission uh, at uh, COP26, mm -hmm. as you're aware, in Glasgow. Uh, and uh, uh, he has uh, particularly emphasized that although there is one Earth, uh, many efforts are required yeah. from different ends. Absolutely. And uh, uh, unbridled consumption, mm -hmm. in fact, has a direct impact uh, in creating uh, and exacerbating many challenges such as global warming, rise in sea levels, uh, you know, floods, drought, uh, deforestation, uh, glacier melts, etc. So can I just have a quick word on technology here because uh, that was also brought up. Um, and, and the short point there is that uh, the consumption conundrum is leading uh, the, uh, and the material pursuit mm -hmm. uh, of uh, consumption is leading us now to look elsewhere, uh, such as uh, mining the uh, deep seabed mm -hmm. resources, for instance. When the Antarctic Treaty comes to an end in 2048, there's going to be a huge scrimmage for resources in mm -hmm. that continent. Yeah. And people are already talking about mining in space. Yeah. Thank you. In all this, uh, the developing countries will be left behind, even though they are the least uh, uh, yeah. of the contributors to this problem. Uh, thanks. Professor uh, Katun, maybe as your, as your closing uh, remarks, I think there's also the, the, the problem of, of food security while we're talking about over uh, consumption in, in many parts of the world, there's also uh, under consumption of food insecurity. Maybe if you can maybe uh, shed light on that. Yes, um, definitely, because while we are seeing over consumption and some are going hungry, so the problem is not the supply issue, it is the distributional issue. It has always been the case that, you know, food self-sufficiency does not mean food security. So at this point in time, be it food security, be it energy security, so it depends on 
intervention, definite intervention by the policymakers. By policymakers, I mean here the global policymakers at the global level. And also, with that regard, I want to bring in another issue very short um, in way. That's the global governance. That you know, we when we talk about consumption and production restriction on that, um, and also the you know the, the uh, measures which have to be taken by countries. The issue of common but differential um, you know, aspects, that, that CBD, so that has to be taken in, into mind. It is, it is discussed and debated also. But then you know, countries which are lagging behind, which are still there uh, you know, struggling to meet the threshold level, they can't be judged in the same level as, you know, as those who are already consuming so much and mm -hmm. producing in, a, in an uns unsustainable way. Thank you, and, and we've reached the end of, of this uh, dialogue, uh, a live, live Kigali dialogue, and I want to um, thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, uh, thank you.